All right, in this video, we're going to show a bit shift. And what I've did is actually save us some time is I've actually uh, shown, I've actually made the code so that we can actually talk about the code and talk about how the bit shift works. We're going to have that bit shift left, as you can see over here in the code. Um, now, this is going to be using an example from Easy PLC. This is the machine over here. I'll widen it out so you can see it. It's basically got two photo eyes and a start stop station and then a uh, uh, it's point right here where it will actually spray uh, a high, uh, like a taller bottle and a shorter bottle basically it will not spray and it will kick at, down here there's a kicker and uh, the kicker will actually kick the sprayed bottles out and then the short bottles that don't get sprayed will continue on down the path down to another chute okay so this is currently not connected but I can show you the IO from that and I can actually turn the conveyors on I can paint you see that I can see all the stuff working I can do the kicker you can see that working so I just wanted to kind of show you a couple different things like that now again you see I already have the PLC code done so first we need to notice that we uh, now you don't you don't have to use um, studio 5000 emulate you can use anything you want as far as this goes easy PLC works with just about any P major brand PLC whatsoever uh, but again when it comes down to it their drivers that you use are gonna be different uh, I will say in my examples I'm using Rockwell automation and Rockwell automation is going to be using the same driver it I have always used it throughout my, all my videos now when I say this you you say the studio 5000 emulate you can use a real processor too. I'm just using this in a fully emulated system so that you don't have to. You know, you can you know that you can either use a, a real processor if you have a real processor or use a emulated processor as well. So let's go ahead and down to that download to that. First I want you to notice I have a or a first scan to this. So I'm gonna be writing zeros into the uh, actual bit shift registry. So let's open up the bit shift bit shift registry real quick and let's see. It actually has data in it. And the reason I'm going to do this first scan is going to load in all of my zeros and to that bit shift. So I'm basically clearing in, I'm clearing the bit shift. Okay. So let's go ahead and download to this processor. So I'm going to pull up um, the comments. All right. The, um, basically who active, right? So I'm coming in and we're going to select our AB VBP1, which is my back, virtual backplane. Um, this is the second slot that is currently in. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to hit download. Now, when I hit download again, we're going to see what the um, actual first scan does, right? We're going to come in and see that we're going to write for all of my zeros in there and clear the bit shift. So we start the program from scratch. We start the machine from scratch. No matter what process, whether it be a power upset or whether it be just a general system, uh, you know, start or whatever the case may be. As soon as I ch uh, change this right here to run, it's going to change. Okay, so now it did a first scan. Now let's come over here and look at our data again. And you see it's all zeros. I did not manipulate that or change that whatsoever. That first scan bit is really, really quick and it loaded all zeros into here. Now all this, this right here is just a tag. Uh, basically, it's just a, an array of data. If you wanted to see that, it's just an array of data right here. Okay. So I'm just matching my arrays and just saying, okay, copy a bunch of zeros into the destination of my bit shift. Down here, uh, the bit shift works a little bit different. Again, we're going to start when the system is active and photo I1 is present and photo I2 is high, uh, meaning it's an, a, a, a one instead of a zero, then it will load a one into that registry. Okay. Let's go ahead and see the, how this works. So uh, let's load our driver. I already have my driver done, but if you want to know what driver to use, it's going to be the APC underscore driver enhanced. Okay, that's the driver I'm currently using. But I, to save time on what I'm doing, I always, again, make my own drivers and save the configuration. So we're going to come in here and use the paint uh, driver right here. Come over here and load that. And as you can see, it does pull up my OPC underscore driver enhance, right? So um, again, it has all my PE1, PE2, start push, push button, it has all my IO in here. Uh, I did choose not to use one of them, which is the pusher advance. I didn't choose to use the output for, or the input for that to say that it is advanced. But again, I, I, you don't have to use everything you it, that's in here. So I'm gonna start my driver Okay, so then the bottom communication down here will say driver connected. 
Now, that doesn't mean the machine's going to start, right? That just means we have communication. Let's start, let's verify that, right? Let's go to RS Links. So we're going to open up RS Links Classic. We're going to go to we can easily open up our communications pass we have, right? But we're going to go to DDE OPC. And we're going to go to topic configuration. Now we want to verify that the uh, topic that we're currently using in our driver for our machine simulator is going to be locked. Okay, this you can see has a lock symbol, and it actually shows that it is pointing to that that ABB. It's it's using the AB underscore VBP driver, which is a virtual backplane driver in RS Links, and it's actually using the second slot. Okay, so now. We know that's working. We know we have good connectivity and Easy PLC's machine simulator has actually shown that with this green indicator down here. So what we can do is come over here and look at our code. Okay, so let's pull our code up. <clears throat> well, let's get the machine simulator where we can see it a little bit better. Uh, let's come over here and get it the right size. I like to get it the right size so that I can actually see. And what we're gonna do is we can get ground level and walk over here to see this so we can easily see our um, and I'm just using my arrow keys so we can easily see our start stop push button station right here and I'll show you how this works okay so I'm gonna hit uh, currently you can see my e-stop is there so if I hit the start button it's not gonna do anything but you see the start button coming on so let's pop in my e-stop Okay. Now the e-stop appears to be in the wrong position. So let's say this this should be in a normally open, and let's go ahead and fix that. It says if when I press it, it goes off. So when it's out, you see that that indicates that it's out, right? So now I can start my system, and you see my system's active. My conveyor's running. Let's back up and watch this a little bit, and you can see the way this works. Okay, let's actually do a, a flying view of this. Let's do a tour. All right, so first, what we're doing is you're gonna see the high bottles right here, right? And the high bottles, the, the white bottles are gonna get painted and that's gonna work off this bit shift right here. And you can see the bit shift is going to, uh, well, let me just actually show, uh, let you see the way the process works. So it's gonna paint all the white bottles, okay? And you see there's labels on the back side. That's why they have a, the actual paint the direction they're doing it. All right. So let's come over here and get a better point where you can see the photo eyes. All right. So there's two photo eyes right here. Okay. There's, a, 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 there's photo eye one and photo eye two. And what they're doing is they're determining whether the bottle is a certain height or not. Now back here in the back, it's still gonna track that specific piece that it actually painted. So it's gonna kick it out to this bin over here as well. Now all of this is done off of this registry, right? So this is a bit shift left, and you can see that there's data in this bit shift happening all the time. Now let's come over here and look at the bit shift, and let's pull up the array data. And let's look at this. You can see that there's constantly data being shifted through here. Now the bit shift left again is going to shift the bit uh, the, uh, to the left. You can use another bit shift again with it to erase it, a bit shift right, or clear the data or whatever the case may be. But again, what we're doing in this is showing a very, very simple example of how to use a bit shift. What we're doing in this atmosphere is we're saying, okay, our conveyor is on. We got a start stop button, conveyor's on, our lights on, everything's good. Conveyor is running right here. The system is active and photo I1 is going to be the smaller one. Okay, so let me actually show you that. Photo I1 is gonna be the smaller one down here. Okay, so it's always gonna come on, right? You see that? Now photo I2 is going to be right here, and that's gonna be linked inside of the bit shift, okay? So that means when this transitions from a one to a zero, and so that means both of these if you think about it, uh, if I'll, I'll do this, I'll do a new operation and show you this. Okay, so I'll do photo I1, 
I'll copy this down here and let's get a bit down here to copy this and let's do photo I2. So I want you to note that just because you can't see the photo I actually transitioning inside of the actual bit shift, this does actually work. Okay, so watch this. The blue right here won't have a it, what, what has to happen is the photo I1 and photo I2 have to be in series together to make the bit shift work. That's going to transition a 1 into this bit shift because the value of photo I2 is going to be transitioned into the bit shift. The bit shift is always going to be moving data, whether it be a 0 or a 1, no matter what. But in order for it to actually paint, it needs to be a 1. And the order of the way the process is working right now is currently again every time a one is tracked through the system it's going to track it all the way to through the process and let's just go ahead and do that one more time you can see the photo eye you can see that as soon as it tracks right here it's going to actually come over and paint that one right so all the high bottles are good all the white ones are going to get painted all the, which are taller all the blue ones which are shorter that means they didn't trigger both it triggered a zero into the bit shift the the larger bottles again triggered a one into the bit shift so it's actually triggering that data right so you can see that data transitioning through here right so you can see it moving through every single time so this one's gonna move it's gonna constantly change each and every time see that change to a zero it just moved it down to the next registry moved it down here and then all the way down to the very bottom, it's going to finally kick it out. And that's, again, a very simple illustration of how a bit shift works. But again, when it comes down to it, you know, just kind of giving you the base implementation, I just made that uh, this right here to show you that, well, we're just loading in the values, right? So let's actually come over here and delete this rung because we don't need it anymore. So I'm going to delete and, it's, and basically uh, finalize the edits. So the bit shift itself is just an array of data. Okay, so this is basically 32 bits and 32 bits of data and then there's a control word and then there's going to be the value. Okay, this could have been a one or it could have been a zero. And how many, how many positions do we want to track? I'm tracking 16 positions of length, right? So 16 bits and then that's really all I'm tracking in the whole system. Now again, why do I use a first scan? And I want to show you that again. So let's just say I restarted uh, the, the whole system. I'm going to stop it real quick. Okay. And I stopped it right in the spray. But you can see I must restart it. Okay. So now let's come over here and let's throw this into program mode. And let's throw it back into run mode. All right. So what we're doing here is clearing all our data. So now when we start again, if I if I just come over here and start my driver again and I come over here and I start the system this is going to start the system from from actually scratch right so this is going to start it from a very healthy point and make the machine work perfectly meaning the very first the, from the very first uh, one that is tracked from the photo eyes from the bit shift is that itself is going to track it properly through the actual spray then all the way down to the kicker which is going to, or the pusher, advanced pusher down here, it's going to push that out. Now you see that's working properly. And again, that's the reason I put that first scan in there because it's always good as a recovery mechanism to actually have something to recover from. Now again, th this does lack a little bit of controls. Again, we could probably, in real life, we could add a lot more photo eyes and a lot more things to uh, protect the system and let it run out do the different different things like that again this is an example of how to use a bit shift though so I wanted to give a clear and precise illustration of well really what is a bit shift how is it used um, without the you know having to you know sit through a long lecture of programming and, and this and that this is a bit shift left again all it does is move uh, the current registry into so basically right here it's just moving the starting with zero and it's mo continuously moving down every time it's used. And when does it get used? It gets used when the system is active and photo I1 is on. And then it's going to go ahead and issue that uh, that bit shift uh, command, right? That that instruction. It's going to issue that and it's going to move the value of 
photo I2, which it, it could be a zero or it could be a one, it's going to move that value into that position. And what what does that position start with? Zero. So every time it does that, it's going to it's going to move in zero, and it's going to move what was in zero into one, what was in one into two, what was in two into three, and that's how a bit shift works. Okay. So just to show you, bit zero, bit one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to sixteen. Um, or 15 in our case right here this is where we really care and this is where we're stopping even though it's continuing to load um, you can see that is the proper protocol of how we're tracking everything so just keep that in mind right because we are using a dent uh, in our environment right we're not using a a, a cent so we, we're using 32 bits instead of 16 right so just keep that in mind so uh, with all that said I just want to make a rough implementation and show you kind of you know hey this is how things are. And one thing I want to note too, if you're using Easy PLC's machine simulator, make sure all your tags are going to be program level. Okay, so controller tags instead of, uh, I'm sorry, they need to be controller tags instead of program level. So I have program level tags in here, right? There's program level tags in here, but the ones that are communicating through my OPC topic are going to be uh, controller level. And those need to be, again, illustrated so that there, it's very important that whatever you're communicating to the Easy PLC program or the machine simulator, that that is actually going to be a controller level tag. Okay. And that will, will help you with communication. It will help you with everything working properly and uh, keep you, you know, without having any kind of headaches and stuff like that. So real quick, this is just a, a very simple example of how a bit shift works and how the you know how I use it inside of a uh, studio 5000 and you can see this is a very simple code very easy to understand uh, not complex at all but just something to pass on the information as in depth is well as, as great as we can using two tools a dynamic tool to make a real machine emulated and taking a real processor and emulating that and then taking pro the code the PLC code behind it and then really meshing those two together to make sure that we can test everything to work, make sure it's working properly. Also, too, um, on here there's a count for the proper the, the number of uh, parts that have been counted. Let's go over here and check that out. Let's see if that is working for us. Uh oh, and I went the wrong direction. I apologize for that. So, and our count's not working, which is no problem. We can get that count working, but again this count should be all the painted products right so just keep that in mind let's just stop the system real quick and we'll restart the machine and then we'll fix it but uh, so what probably happening right here is this part is a program scope tag so it's not a controller scope tag it's a program scope tag so to fix that what I would do um, I'll tell you what, tell you what we'll, we'll do that in the very next video and show you how to fix that. Uh, and again, that, that's going to show the importance of controller scope versus program scope. Uh, but again, this video I want to keep very idolized down to, you know, I guess uh, the bit shift left instruction. How to use that, how to use that in a process just like we did. Very simple logic, very clean, precise, and that's how you would actually come in and do that, right? And the bits that I want to trigger down here, obviously to do the spray, are going to, in the advance, are going to be bit 5 and bit 15. So if you had Easy PLC and you have Machine Simulator and you wanted to practice this yourself, please look through this code. You can utilize this code and um, you know get it running yourself and see and, and actually practice. Building that muscle memory, even if you didn't come up with the code. If you implement the code and build that muscle memory of how it works, then the next time you have a, a better implementation and you, maybe you can do it different. Maybe you can do it better. Maybe you can grow and, and, and you know, make things a whole lot better than what I did or maybe have a better recovery system. You know, again, there's a million and one ways to write a program. Whether you do it one way and I do it another way, it doesn't mean if it's right or wrong. The goal is to have it reliable, have it working, have it easy for the operators to use, and then have it always do the function or the scope of work that it's supposed to be doing in a safely manner right so that's the goal so when it comes down to it hopefully this is helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one